Hello, I have a Paralympic superstar for you now who completes my target of interviewing 21 Paralympians during lockdown. I was there to see him win 100 metres gold in both London and Rio, and he's now aiming for an incredible hat trick in Tokyo. It's Johnny Peacock. Hi, Johnny. Great to see you. Now, um, listen, we should start with some sad news this week. Um, people have probably seen or heard that Margaret Morn, Britain's first ever Paralympic gold medalist, um, died this week. She won gold um, at the Rome Games in 1960 in archery. She also lit the flame at London 2012. So that's um, a real blow, isn't it, to the, the Paralympic movement uh, in this country and around the world? Yeah, it's, it's incredibly sad news, but she will be missed. Um, everyone's thoughts, obviously, with her family. We've got to kind of carry on the work that she started. Well said, yeah, she leaves a remarkable legacy. Now, uh, talking about yourself, so how, how has lockdown been treating you? Where are you and, and who are you with? Uh, uh, I am just uh, around Leicester at the moment uh, with my girlfriend and my two dogs. Um, they're probably sick, uh, sick of me right now, uh, I'm sure. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, just... Just ticking away really you know obviously it's it's a crazy time right now um but you know it's filled with lots of lessons too which is which is quite fun i thought sally might have tried to encourage you to go to northern ireland and spend lockdown there <laughs> she has oh she really has yeah she's been saying it she's like, oh, they've, they've got like a spare little cottage we can stay in the cottage you know and i'm like that's that's not social distancing sally you know if we're gonna go and no, obviously I can't. There's just like a track here and also another no, closer track. What excuses do I have left? <laughs> not many. No, um, no. Yeah, obviously that's that is a shame that she's not going to be able to get back for a while. So that's that's been quite tough for her. But um, no, it's for, to be honest with you, like we're quite like reclusive, <laughs> unsocial people. So like this is kind of it's 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 obviously not not great, but it's not you know I'm not absolutely hating it you know there's a part of me that kind of enjoys that that time of just you know just just head down getting the work done yeah. sitting on the xbox afterwards <laughs> yeah. Same old. there's definitely pros as well as cons isn't there so how much have you been able to train has, has a track been available to you at all or? um well obviously technically no um there isn't really a track around but because because for me, you know, I think a lot of people have been able to get by doing stuff on the grass, even on the, the concrete outside. Um, that's all well and good when you've got ankles, because uh, you have that proprioception to make the adjustments in the ground. If the ground's uneven, if you go over a bobble, your ankle's doing all these little movements. Uh, for me, it goes up the knee. Um, and it just, it's just going to kick my knee out if basically if I, if I come onto an, an uneven surface. And coming back from a knee injury at the moment as well, after having an op, obviously like four months ago I don't think that's too wise so I have to I've had to basically kind of break into Leicester's track at the moment uh <laughs> I don't know if I should be saying that or not but yeah there's like a hole a hole in the fence that I've been uh going through uh, twice a week at the moment um just to kind of keep up just trying to do what I can do without getting in too much trouble <laughs> and they didn't know about it until now so well yeah that's it I don't know if I just shot myself in the foot <laughs> Which, as long as it's the right one we're okay presumably your uh, presumably your normal training facilities at Loughborough will begin to reopen do you think over the next sort of week or two or? yeah I think they started um on Monday this week so um they have started to open the outdoor track now uh, starting to phase it open but at the moment it's only four athletes on the whole track at, uh, at one time uh, you have 90 minutes to do your session obviously there's a health questionnaire there's, there's lots of things that you have to go through and there's all these um, obviously procedures now um, quite rightly so but for me um, the fact is it's just it's just the track that I'm getting access to and I already have that so yeah. <laughs> for now I'll, uh, I'll stick to Leicester but yeah, How tough is it to think that you've got another year ahead now uh, until till Tokyo? Was that was that actually you know quite a blow? To be honest, no. It was great. <laughs> if I'm gonna be completely honest, like you know, it, for me personally, it was great news because um, obviously it's not great news why, um, but the silver lining for me is the fact that yeah, because I've had a, my knee injury and this for me was going to be a tight season where. We weren't 100% sure if we were going to be able to get all of that speed work and, and everything we needed to by the time. But 
you know, if any hiccups were to arise, it was going to be tough. Now we've been given 18 months, you know, been given one of the shortest setups, which has been flipped into one of the longest setups now. So for me personally, it's great because it means I get to really kind of slow down now and, and really take my time throughout this, this proper rehab process uh, and the return to full training. Um, and then, yeah, can I can just really tick over this year and, and really hit it next year. So for me personally, I, I don't mind it. You know, it's, it's come at a good time. And is the knee in good shape? It's getting there, yeah, yeah. I think um, obviously it took a long time. It was one of these things. Um, it was a small. I just tripped up at Newcastle Great City Games in my warm up, basically, and just kind of twisted my knee on landing. Um, and I thought at the time, yeah, it was just like a week out, uh, and then a week out, turned to two weeks, which turned to four, which turned to six, which turned to an operation, uh, which turned to six months. You know, so. It wasn't great, but now I can run again and now things are starting to move. It's great. Yeah. So I'm not quite obviously up to 100 percent, but but I don't know if I would be or not. If this is this Corona's case or my knee's case, I'm not sure. At the moment, the knee's not not uh, complaining about anything. So we're in a we're in a good way. And away from away from the training, away from the sport, do you find it easy to relax? I mean, you mentioned, you know, gaming there and, and stuff like that. Are you somebody who finds it easy to switch off? Too, too easy. Yeah, <laughs> I think that's the problem there. It's too easy to relax sometimes. Yeah, I get into trouble. Uh, I've been on my Xbox too long or yeah, there's things around the house that need doing. Stop relaxing. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you've done that too much today. Yeah, it's for me switching off, you know, I think that's, that is why I like things like my Xbox is because it does hit that switch off button. You can keep your brain active, but you're not thinking about, you know, the pressures or, you know, short things you have to do. Just get... Just, yeah, it just really hits that off that off button that allows you to just decompress, I feel like, and yeah, just, just relax. So for me personally, no problems there. <laughs> now, I sense that you might have the knee injury and the rehab up your sleeve as an excuse here, but the big question is, have you been doing O.T. Mabuse's dance workouts? <laughs> yeah, the knee, the knee just can't handle that, that torsion and that twisting and the movements. Uh, there's definitely been a few couple moves i checked them out the first few weeks as well they were really cool um but she's too good for me you know she's just too fast you know i can't keep up with those moves um oh, she's got us she takes me um i think like a week ago yeah she's uh she's she's obviously been doing so much great stuff over this time as well obviously helping out so many kids which is awesome to see um yeah and after she had a flipping great year last year didn't she so i think she didn't want anything to stop either so <laughs> Okay, I'll let you off. I'll let you off. Not <laughs> At least you've been watching, I suppose. I've been watching. I've definitely been catching a few. Um, yeah, I told you though, my moves. <laughs> I need one-on-one -on -one training for hours to to get to just get one step down. So yeah, there's no chance I'm going to be able to do it on my own. <laughs> I mean, I know it seems probably like a lifetime ago to you, but just reflecting on Strictly, I mean, the way, well, did it change your life? How did it change your life? Even just for those couple of months? Yeah, of course. I think you know. It has to. It's one of the, it's 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 a big life changing experience. You know, it's it's completely different to the world that I'm used to, and it, and it really showed me a lot. Um, you know, but for me, it's just perspective, isn't it? You know, it just puts everything into perspective, and it was so much fun, and it was a really good thing to be a part of, and it and it taught me a lot of things. Um, but yeah, one of the things I think it taught me as well is just to be true to myself. You know, be be who I am. And try and be anybody else and just as long as you're happy and you're enjoying it then, then that's the only thing that matters so yeah because you're, you're you're actually a pretty private shy guy really aren't you i mean was that was that actually quite a chat that was probably the most challenging aspect i would have thought was it yeah well i think yeah i like to keep some things i think private and just i don't know i just don't like i don't know what it is yeah i just like to have i just I like to have a normal life to it to a point you know and try and be as you know, as, yeah, as, as normal and as possible. It was quite funny. I think the, the only thing really was like the Hello and the OK magazines or whatever that kept trying to ask to do something with me and say, oh, can we come around the house? I'm just like, no. <laughs> why? why, why? Yeah, no, it's just a couple. Why? <laughs> why? <laughs> you just wanted to get on the dance floor. That's it. Yeah, I oh, know. But um, yeah, no, for me, it was, yeah, it, was, it, was, it was a really cool time. It was a really cool time. And yeah, everyone's obviously... It wasn't, yeah, it wasn't actually too, too intrusive, to be fair. I think actually everyone was pretty respectful. I think that's the thing. Everyone just gives, gives what, what you want to do, don't they, in the world? 
and I know you'll be your sole focus now will be sort of recovery from the NEOP and, and, and Tokyo but do you find yourself sort of thinking beyond Tokyo and what what you might do after that is there another Paralympic Games in you? <laughs> uh, yeah I had this chat because not proper chat yet I think I mentioned this to, uh, to my agent recently he was like oh do you uh I was like, yeah, no way, no way. I'm not stopping after uh, after Tokyo. So I'm going to have to stop when my body makes me. Uh, yeah, that's that's my, uh, I think that's my my case of attack. You know, I, I love this sport. You know, it's, I, I feel very, very, very lucky to do what I do. You know, I get to wake up, I get to train for a living and it's very fun. You know, it's very enjoyable. I'm very lucky to be in that situation. And I'm going to try and hold on to it as long as, and milk it as long as I can, you know. <laughs> You know, and, and hold on to that life. It's it's thoroughly enjoyable one. So, and I love competing. So, unless I start, you know, I think yeah, I think when the body starts falling apart, maybe we'll have to reevaluate. But at least for now, um, I, I plan on yeah, plan on attacking. And I mean, I have seen you at pretty close quarters snowboard. <laughs> and so, have any other sports ever made you think? Oh, I don't know. You know, I'll do I'll do Tokyo, and then I might. I mean, you know, I was speaking to Kadena Cox this week. She's got her eye on winter sports. Evan O'Hanlon, the Australian sprinter, is trying to get into bobsleigh. Any any thoughts in, in that direction? Um, uh, <laughs> maybe we'll have some fun in the future. Who knows? Yeah, okay. For me, you know, I, I, I don't have... I can't really do that. <laughs> <laughs> if I got hurt trying another sport right now, which seems to happen every... I, I think I played football. I remember a few years ago, I played football for about five minutes. I tore my MCL, uh, couldn't train for eight weeks. So, you know, it's just, for me, not right now. You know, it's just not worth the risk um, and, and the impact that it's going to cause. Obviously, yeah, you, you saw me attempt to snowboard and, and how bad that can be when, when you do any tasks. So, you remember the sweat. You remember, like, I just come back be standing outside just in a t shirt, like, <laughs> trying to not sweat. He did pretty yeah. well, I thought, actually. But, um, <laughs> and, and when you look at Tokyo, um, 100 metres, are your rivals likely to be the same guys you lined up against in, in Rio? Um, yeah, so for me, obviously, Johannes was the guy to watch last year. He was lighting the track up. Um, I was really gutted that I didn't get to go to Worlds because, obviously, it's, it's, it's another time that, you know, 40-degree heat, bait track, the perfect conditions to run fast and... You're not there, so it's very disappointing. And obviously, he ran a great race. Um, but yeah, I would I would imagine Johannes, Felix, Jared, um, Richard Brown, maybe. I don't know. You like to just I don't know. You like to say his name. I think he has fun on Instagram sometimes. I don't know if he ever plans on running, <laughs> but who knows? It'll be great to see him back. Yeah. Um, and at the same time, you know, we, we always remember it's Paris Sport and the fact that we had this you know, Corona keeping everyone off the track for a year. You don't know where anyone's at. You don't know where, where the sport's at. If there's new people, which what happens in Paralympic sport, and new people come out every year. Mm. So we might find next year somebody comes out who's actually been around for two years and dropped something. So, you know, you always have to be careful. But I think one thing that Dan, Dan taught me very well, I think one of the first lessons I learned as an athlete is when we do, you know, you're a sprinter, you, you have a lane that separates you between the athletes nothing I can do can control the other guys. Mm -hmm. So for me, there's no point worrying about them because there's nothing I can do that can affect them. The only thing that I can change is what happens between those lines in my lane. So all I can focus on is myself. And as long as I do that well, then I've done everything I can. So. Well, I think it's fair to say that we, we, we can't wait for it. And I'm sure uh, you can't wait for Tokyo either, particularly with this unexpected um, delay. But uh, it's great to talk to you. Thanks, Johnny, for the time. And uh, best of luck with everything. Uh, thanks so much. Cheers. Cheers, Andy.